This is section A1, part B, Introduction to Vectors. When you're multiplying vectors by a scalar, so if you have a vector v and it's multiplied by a real number that's a scalar k, the scalar multiplies k times the vector v, so you're going to take the magnitude or the length of k and multiply it by the magnitude of vector v. Its direction is denoted by the sine of k. So if k is less than zero, if it's negative, it's going to go in the opposite direction. If it is a positive value, it's going to go in the same direction. So we need to draw a vector diagram of 3x minus 3 fourths y. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the length of x is. So x right now is 29 centimeters. If x is equal to 29 centimeters, then 3 times x is going to give us 87 centimeters. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw 3x. So we'll start at 0 and we'll go over to 87 centimeters. And this will be vector that is represented by 3x. Now it says we need to subtract 3 fourths y. So the first thing we need to do is measure vector y. y is about 55 centimeters. And we're finding 3 fourths of that value. So 55 times 3 fourths is going to give us 41.25 centimeters. So we're going to start at the end of the first vector and we want to keep the angle the same so we don't move our ruler the angle we want to keep it the same now why is it initially pointing upward but since this says minus we're going to point it in the opposite direction so we're going to start here we're going to go down instead of up and this is three-fourths of y and it's a negative three-fourths of y because it's going the opposite direction so our resultant vector, you start at the beginning of your first vector, go to the end of your second vector, and you just connect them from the beginning of the first to the end of the second. And this is 3x minus 3 fourths y. A vector that's in component form is two or more vectors with a sum of the resultant vector r. While components can have any direction, it is often used to express or resolve a vector into two perpendicular components. So if we have a resultant vector, we want to break it down to know what the x component is and what the y component is. To do this, we're going to look at rectangular components the components of a resultant vector that are horizontal and vertical, or the x vector, vector and the y vector. So Heather is pushing a handle of a lawnmower with a force of 450 newtons at an angle of 56 degrees with the ground. We need to draw a diagram that shows the resolution of the force that Heather exerts into the regular component, into a rectangular component. So she is pushing down, and it's a 56 degree angle. This is her 450 newtons. She's pushing down, and she's pushing to the left. So this is the y vector, and this is the x vector. Now, if you remember from trig, if this is our angle, the side across from the angle is your opposite. Between the angle and the 90 is the adjacent. And across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. Or you can remember that the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And the sine of theta is equal to the y over r. 
So our x component is our adjacent. So we know that the cosine of 56 is equal to x over your resultant vector. And the sine of 56 degrees is equal to y over your resultant vector. So when we calculate this, it's x divided by 450. So we would multiply both sides by 450. And we're going to get an x value of approximately 252 newtons. If we do the same thing to solve for y, we're going to get a y value that's approximately 373 newtons. So our diagram is drawn. It says to find the magnitude of the horizontal and vertical components of the force. Our horizontal has 252 newtons, which is the magnitude. Our vertical, how much is it pushing down, is 373 newtons.